And I know that um, one of the focuses of your set, set of meeting is actually to do with um, urban, urban development to do with community. So I thought I'd throw in some of the things we did for community itself. This is Neymar 17 in 1985. Um, and this one actually dealt with low income urban housing. And it dealt with people um, who were, uh, who were disenfranchised, disenfranchised. And some of it was looking at housing that was done by, um, what should I say, by the people themselves, you know, the sort of architecture without architects. And some dealt with designed architectural housing, Doshi, for instance. Uh, we covered Doshi's early low, lower income or mid income housing designed by him. We looked at Charles Courier and others. We actually did an issue on Charles Courier's work as well at one point, because one, he was an advisor to us and was willing to give us and do drawings and do materials for us, redo things, uh, even photograph things. Although a lot of the photographs were all, half of them were amateurs like me taking photographs. Um, this one had another, um, an article on the architecture of Chitral in Pakistan, the indigenous architecture. So the range of these um, things um, was quite significant. Next, please. There was, there was a kind of a plan that I would say that, um, that we, we chose what should go into the, into the um, as, as subject matter, into the journal, into the magazine. It's really an interesting cross between a journal and a magazine and architecture, between profession and academia. And some of the articles that were, I would say more scholarly were, refereed. So part of the journal was refereed, but most of it was not. So it was a kind of interesting. And the reason it was refereed is that a lot of younger professors, architects, needed a refereed journal for their tenure process. So we did that to accommodate them mainly, but we hope that the quality of stuff would be as um, uh, evenly uh, was evenly good. This was the Mimar cartoon at that time, which you know says uh, on low income housing. This would be a cartoon before the editorial. Next. As I said, we took advantage of the Al Khan Award. Um, the award held a um, one of its uh, ceremonies and some uh, um, seminars in Morocco. So we were in Morocco, so we took Morocco and, and covered Morocco in 86. This is an 86 journal. Um, and covered in this one, the Aga Khan Awards as well. So we would publish the awards, but we were free to say whatever we wanted about the awards. So either Brian, myself, or somebody else would write up descriptions of what we thought the award was about. And it had no, um, no limitations by the Aga Khan Award itself. So there's a great freedom to do what we like. We, our purpose in Mimar was to be positive. So we weren't, for a long time, um, we were less critical than we could have been. But the purpose was really to tell people there's some, there's some good stuff going on in that part of the world and all over the third world, etc. at that time, as it was called. Um, and that we were really trying to tell people, here is something that you could look at from your cultures and your viewpoint. Because very few journals, um, whether it be architectural, um, architecture, or whatever the institute journals, et cetera, record, um, would cover architecture in our parts of the world. They began to cover the award and the winners, but maybe once a year, there'd be a special issue from Architecture Review saying, architecture in the third world or architecture in Asia. But they were really looking at the states, sometimes Japan, uh, but states in England and Europe. So our purpose was to be a counterbalance to the discourse of architecture that was going on, but in general, trying to be fairly positive about it rather than 
uh, saying, oh, look at all this stuff, this is not good, which is actually what the award also did. The award decided that they would tell people, look, there's some good stuff going on there. So that was the, the exchange in a way of ideas. Here's another one, which uh, just a card. These cartoons became sort of more commentaries than anything else. And some of them were quite amusing too. And there's somebody saying, look at the attention to human scale in, in, uh, with the statue in this place. But of course, the, uh, the building itself or the development is completely out of, uh, out of scale in that sense. People need to see the tangible. So we decided that we will do, we will kind of um, come up with a pilot action plan uh, that we know for sure from our findings and from having talked to the people that it, it will be part of our priority action plan list and try to implement it in parallel with the work so that they, they don't wait for two years for the action plans to be drafted and then begin to be implemented. So um, we started with an action plan that has to do with the community spaces because that's again part of the healing process. It brings the people together and we really believe in um, um, our position, which is about people-centered participatory, uh, etc. But we also believe in um, restoring social and economic networks, relinking people to place. Um, and we thought that the community shared spaces are the best catalyst for unleashing this recovery process. So we started there and we started thinking of a community space for each one of these three sub neighborhoods. But then we thought, no, nah, we cannot do one and leave the other. We don't have enough funding. So we tried to sort of first see what are the socio-spatial practices. If we had one strategic intervention for a community space, where would it be? So we did mapping of the socio-spatial practices. We did heat maps of where these uh, intensities occur, uh, whether they are domestic or play practices for the kids or business related practices where people meet for business meetings and encroach on the sidewalks and what have you and um, also temporary emerging um, uh, socio-spatial practices that had to do with the post-plus emergency aid. And then we collapsed all of them. And we realized that they really have concentration areas in the sub-neighborhoods that we read. So we decided, no, we cannot do one community space. We have to do one community space per each of the three sub-neighborhoods and then connect them with the spine. And then we started thinking, where are the accessible points? Where is the militarized zones? And where are the closed off streets? What is the most strategic approach? And we came up with a concept for, you know, um, one community space per neighborhood and then a spine that connects it. And then we thought of a long-term vision that we incrementally work towards, even if we have one community space. When we did this, um, we were also coordinating with other actors on the ground. They each adopted a space or a street network. So actually now we're working with five different agencies. We're doing a community center and a community space. Um, uh, CUL is doing another community center. ILO is doing the street network. One NGO working in one of the sub neighborhoods that it will do the, the uh, streets. So incrementally, each one adopted part of it. And again, we ran the, the um, vision for an open space network with community centers with the community. They told us what their priorities are and we moved to kind of think with them about what are their priorities. We should not postpone these lofty goals of seeing justice in spatial terms until our, uh, until our next cool building that we are going to design. So it is a kind of, you know, we postpone these lofty ideals till our next big project. So I think we have to make social justice in space, specialized form of justices, a habit of mind. It can operate in many different ways. Even giving your uh, client in a private residence the opportunities of cross ventilation particularly after the pandemic where cross ventilation 
uh, of your house is a form of justice that uh, you can ensure at a very micro level. But you can also design, uh, you know, uh, at a large macro scale, you can imagine a public toilet that uh, you may design in your city as a form of giving back to the city a notion of justice. So I think social justice, fairness, uh, equity, all of these have to be part of how we do, how we think about space. This has to be a mindset rather than a box to check off. I, I am right now spearheading the uh, equity, inclusion, and diversity in my school as part of accreditation. So I'm seeing how even all architecture schools, GSD, Harvard Graduate School of Design in 2019, formed a special office for uh, equity, inclusion, and diversity. Columbia has uh, formed a special office to deal with these ideas. So design has become a way to see a fairer world. Design gives us an opportunity to make the world a better place for everybody. This has to be internalized in everything that we do. It is not something that we learn only in fifth year or as a graduate student. This has to be a mindset through pedagogy, through everyday experience, but we cannot solve society's all problems by ourselves as architects or as planners. But we can partner with society's forces uh, to address these issues collectively, but we have to do our part. 